My name is Nadja Deming. And my name is Camille Caldwell. And this is WJAG TV with your weekly school news. Girls soccer has seen some initial struggle, however, with more and more people learning the game and having increased enthusiasm, girls soccer has high hopes for the future. I went to interview soccer coach Shaylee Pekoski and student athlete Jessica Jacob Bellis to see how they plan to improve over this season. I feel we have gotten a lot better since our first game because it was kind of rough, but now I feel like we can win against JV games. We can definitely improve on like marking our players and trying to get more goals. It's really nice being in an atmosphere where I get to kind of give back all the knowledge I've learned over the years, so it's really great. The thing I love about this team in um, particular is they all work so well together. They're such a great team. They all love each other. They're awesome friends, so they work well off the field as much as they do on the field, which is really awesome. We um, tied a few games, which is really good for us. Um, we've gotten four goals, which is awesome compared to last year. Um, there's definite improvement. We just changed our region around this year, so we're kind of stacked against us, but there's definite improvement. They're a lot more committed than last year. Um, they're more committed, so they're all showing up for practices. They're actually learning. Their touches are better. Like I said, we've got four goals this year, which compared to last year, we had like one. So already a huge improvement. They all are starting to just kind of understand soccer in general. We've got a, every year we've got a lot of girls who just have never played before. They don't know anything about it. And um, we're getting close to the end of the season, and already you can tell that some of them know what they're doing, which is kind of nice. Journalists Elena Gorshinen and Jake Gunterman spoke with Cedar Shoals senior Evan Bashirden about his dynamic wardrobe and his fashion inspirations. Here's a closer look at some of his work. Uh, my name is Evan Bashirden. Um, I'm in 12th grade. My biggest inspiration is God and just experiencing the stuff that I went through, my experiences, and the people that's around. So you put, you take the bobbin, and it's already in us, like you put it in there, you know. And like I take different uh, things from different people, or like they'll offer it to me. Some stuff that's around my house, uh, people, like commissions, I take commissions at the school, so if anybody like Okay, so I was on Instagram. I'm gonna tell you, I seen Kanye West with a jacket, and I seen him with some pants on, and they had like this, uh, all these sequins and medallions and jewels and stuff on the jacket. Um, and the first thing that came to my mind was like, I like the way they look, you know, like I like the overcrowdedness and how how, how it got all this stuff going on. So I said, well, I'm gonna try to do that with that whole jacket, and I got tired of doing putting stuff on I was gonna put the, like do the whole jacket up like I'm telling you I kid you not I was gonna have stuff all on that jacket but um I got inspired by ball mine and that whole overcrowded look and I wanted just to take what I had you know I, I wanted to recreate something out of what I already had and some materials that when nobody really used door handles you know door handles, wiring, uh, chips, Microsoft, I mean, not Microsoft, but uh, motherboard chips, uh, different pieces of jewelry, flashlight, mo mi uh, microphone capes, things that go on top of the microphone, you get pearls, like little fake pearls and stuff like that, chains, you know, just all this different stuff, different pieces of denim, all this different stuff that really went into it and 
you know, it really kind of explains our era, era right now, how we all like into all this different stuff, and especially technology. And um, it's kind of like while I was doing it, all I was doing was tearing up technology. I would crush, I was just crushing stuff. Me and my brother, my brother would just come in there if he was upset or something. Jay, just, can I help you? And just pop, pop. And I was like, you know, that's that's just what it was. It was like destructive technology. And that's kind of where it came from, in a way. So it's like three ideas in one, in a way. Uh, can you, like, talk a little bit about how you, like, to inspire or be an inspiration to your siblings? Yeah, um... Just like having them around me when I'm doing stuff. When I was when I was back in the day, like uh, like I said, like in my 11th grade year, or like when I was younger, I wanted nothing. I didn't want them to be around me because I felt like you know, well, they always want to be like me, and I didn't know the gift of having siblings. You know, I didn't know that real that um the. The satisfaction that they get to having a big brother that knows how to do this stuff and I didn't look at it from their perspective I was stuck on my perspective so I mean I take acknowledgement to the fact that they look look up to me you know and they they are inspired by that and it made me want to be uh, better I've always have been me ever since I was a young cat and they watch me grow and you know it's still I'm still growing and I'm still learning and, and that's all I can do you know this life isn't this life isn't um it ain't always easy to be nice to people but when you have it in your heart you know when you have it in your heart to love somebody you keep that you know because that's a gift to have is a gift of love you never want to just do away with that because of what somebody else did to you so don't never feel like you know because this person act like this towards me that I have to act like that towards them and, uh, yeah so it's it's all love y'all really and last but certainly not least for our new stories this week we have a behind the scenes look at Cedar Theater's play Into the Woods with Olivia Dufer. <laughs> Something people don't realize about being part of a full stage production is it's so much more than the acting. There's a lot um, that you might be able to see over my shoulder, I'm not sure. There's a lot that goes on um, in preparation for the show that involves a wide variety of skills. For instance, um, the ability to um, work with electrical configurations, um, the ability to use power tools, the ability to actually construct things out of wood, metal, um, PVC pipe, whatever the materials are we're working with, uh, sewing skills, being able to hand sew, being able to sew on a sewing machine, um, the ability to design um, the various aspects of the show, like the costumes. Uh, lighting requires a design plan, um, the set requires design. Um, that's also not even taking into account that we have props that get used in the show. There's publicity, so literally being able to lay out a design for the poster, for the logo, for the show. Um, all of those factors are sort of behind the scenes, and I don't know if when people think of a show that they think much beyond the acting. Into the Woods is a very challenging show. Um, it's known for the challenges of the lyrics because the lyrics are similar but different and that is a really challenging thing to do to keep up with the different varieties of lyrics that happen throughout the show. Same thing with the music. The music throughout the show is similar but there are changes in the music including tempo changes, a variety of um, small nuances like that that can be very challenging. Um, Into the Woods is actually considered an advanced show for performers because of the demands of precision, timing, lyrics, um, very challenging vocals. Uh, Stephen Sondheim, who wrote it, I think purposely likes to torture um, vocalists um, and really put some demands on them. When opening night rolls around, um, it's a little bit of an emotional roller coaster once we actually get to the production because um, we've been for the last few weeks on this tremendous forced march where literally this is all we do 24-7. Um, for instance, I went home at a quarter to 11 o'clock last night, so it, it, it's truly a second job for all of us involved. 
So by the time we get to opening night, I guess we all feel like um, it is the most important thing in the world, and that's very exciting and it's very gratifying having an audience come in to watch. It's also extremely stressful because it's our baby, and our baby, ready or not, is going up in front of an audience who's paid tickets and expects a good show. And now to Alden Wynn with our student sports news. Thank you, Naja. This is Alton with your weekly sports news. So coming up this week, we've got, for track, there's going to be an Athens Area Championship Tuesday, April 11th at 4 o'clock here. For tennis, there will be a match Thursday, April 6th at Appalachia at 4, and on Tuesday, April the 11th, which will be the region tournament at Buford at 7.30 in the morning. For golf, April 7th, there will be a match at 4 o'clock at Commerce East Hall at the Double Oaks Golf Club. Now back to you, Naja and Camille. Thank you, Alden. Attention, students. Due to severe weather, today's talent show has been canceled and postponed for Tuesday, April 25th. Please be sure to attend and support your Jaguars. Students, please continue to bring toiletry items for Senior Care Team's toiletry drive and drop them off in the blue box in the counseling office. And students, please do not forget to visit Project Prom in room A215 for all of your prom needs during the advisement. Again, I'm Nadja Deming. And I'm Camille Caldwell. And, and this, this has been WJAG-TV with your weekly school news. Stay safe out there, Jags.